All right, guys, Street Fighter 6 is out, and we're gonna start our new series of guides, tips, and tutorials. We're gonna do it in a different format this time from Street Fighter 5. The way we're gonna do them is we're gonna try to concentrate on short format, and we're gonna get them out in bite sizes. But we're not just gonna begin from the very basics. Uh, in this case, we are, but we're gonna jump between, you know, basics, intermediate, and some advanced stuff, and we'll go back and forth. And then at the end of all these guides, you know, I'll be taking suggestions from the Twitch chat, I'll be taking suggestions from the YouTube. And if you guys have any questions or something I'm explaining that you guys don't understand, uh, we can always come back. We're gonna try to cover everything, and then hopefully as the years go by, we're gonna have this all in one gigantic playlist. And then if someone wants to learn Street Fighter down the road, they won't feel, well, they will still be overwhelmed, but at least they'll have this giant playlist to go back to someday so this will be the first episode episode one so it's going to be a special episode and i'm going to attempt to very very briefly explain every single character there's no way i'm going to be able to pull this off without a script uh so i'm going to need your guys's help i'm going to tell you guys uh, partly how the character plays what their fighting style is and maybe their weakness too and kind of help you guys figure out which character you might want to play but this is very important guys play the character you think looks cool plays cool is fun to play that is the most important thing okay do not focus on what your character you think is top tier or all the pros are using and who is uh you think isn't weak it's more important to have fun so you stay with the character right and then bounce later very very important and another thing too i'm not going to go over combos mirror's doing the combos separately we have giant combo guides that eventually will have release for every single character mirror's on the grind right now for whatever character i explain there should be a combo guide okay i know that was a super long intro but had to get that out of the way okay so of course let's start with ryu man ryu the poster boy of street fighter the star of the show the og uh, Ryu's fighting style is... He's a Shotokan. What is that, guys? That's like karate, right? I think it's karate. <laughs> I think it is. Anyways, we're going over a Shoto first. So, Ryu is uh, a really easy character to start off with. He's like the best character to learn Street Fighter with in almost every single Street Fighter because he's very well-rounded. He has every tool he needs to win. He's got an excellent anti-air and reversal right he's got good zoning he's got decent anti-zoning if he needs to clear the way and he's a character that can be played in any style he can be played as you can turtle up with ryu and play him as his owner you can rush down with him and play him uh very aggressively or you can switch gears mid-match right very freestyle character and he's excellent to learn the fundamentals of the game but he's got some new stuff in street fighter 6 he does evolve over time First, he's got his donkey kicks. These are good surprise attacks. They're relatively safe on block. And uh, if you can land like a solid hit with the OD, you can get some good damage uh, with it. He also has a new palm move. This is good for block streams, right? Uh, it's good for confirming into uh, super, into his level two. And then on top of that, Ryu can also buff up his attacks. So if you go down, down punch, uh, it'll amplify his uh, next fireball to be super fast, do multiple hits, so it'll beat uh, other fireballs. So I'll show you guys real quick here. It'll go right through. It will knock down. And it'll also buff up his palm attack. So if you hit with the palm attack as well, then uh, it'll cause them to flip up in the air and allow some cool juggle combos. It also actually buffs up his level one super does more damage as well and it buffs up his uh level two his palm super as well so like i said ryu is still ryu but he has some extra tools and uh unlike street fighter 5 he's got decent buns this time good standing light uh punch he's got some uh decent target combos he's got like a forward heavy kick which can reach quite far forward medium punch is a good check for uh dashes if someone's dashing in on you and yeah, he's got his overhead. He makes good use of the drive system. Ryu is just a good, solid, fundamentals character, and he's quite easy to use and understand. Um, the weakness of Ryu is that everyone knows Ryu. He is, like I said, the OG since Street Fighter 1. Everyone knows Ryu's moves. Everyone knows what Ryu is capable of. 
and you'll never really get you'll never really surprise anyone with this character so he's the kind of character that you're going to have to carry uh to victory and he won't really carry you with gimmicks chad put in the work with the corrections yeah <laughs> Like, everything I say that's wrong, just correct me in the chat. And then the people on YouTube will just read it and be like, wow, Vesper really has no idea what he's talking about, does he? That's what happens when you don't have a script. Moving on to Ken now. Another Shoto. He trained with Ryu. This is training partner. So Ken, he seems like Ryu. You know, he's got like the same kind of moves. The uppercut, the tatsu, the fireball. And he's also well-rounded. But there's a twist. Ken's got fire! Fire Tatsu, Fire Uppercut, and his OD Fireballs, it's not fire, unfortunately. That was Street Fighter V. But Ken is cool. So Ken, he's more uh, aggressive. Um, the unique thing about Ken is that he's got really good close combos. So like he can combo from like his Light Punch when he's really close. And he has a run in this game. So you press two kicks and he'll run forward. And you can run stop. So you can do like gimmicky stuff. Run, stop, throw. Uh, you can run into an overhead kick. Run into a step kick. Like this. And when you do a special move from the run, it amplifies it. So he gets like a running uppercut. This goes through fireballs. For example, I'll get ready to throw a fireball. I'll show you guys. Go right through a fireball. Or you can run tats, you know, like carry you across the screen. You can even, like, juggle into it. Really good. He also has crazy kicks. So you can go into this Jinrai kick, and then you can go low after. You can go overhead after. Uh, if you OD it, you can go into, like, their level 3 for a mix-up. He has Dragon Lash kicks. Uh, the heavy one is plus 1 on block, so you can start pressure from it. I feel like you catch the opponent sleeping. So he's got a lot of cool things. Uh, for aggression Ken is more of the the combo Shoto. He's more of the damage Shoto. He wants to get close um, The downside to Ken is that his zoning isn't as strong as Ryu, right? He's more leaning to the aggression side So like his OD fireball won't knock down another thing too about Ken maybe not right now but as this game evolves a lot of ken's stuff is actually dangerous to do like his dragon lash kick is pretty telegraphed like someone can hit you with di if they're looking for it you know the crazy kicks uh there is a gap in between that someone can do like a super in between there is some riskiness to ken so to succeed with ken you have to be someone who is good at mixing it up and not becoming predictable right you have to be crafty with ken if you want more spice you want a spicier Ryu, if Ryu's too plain and boring for you, then I suggest Ken. All right, the third Shoto in the game. Actually, well, you could play Luke like a Shoto, but his fighting style is more of a, I guess he's MMA, right? So if you like MMA, you might like Luke. Um, out of the three Shotos between Ryu, Ken, and Luke, I would say Luke is the sweaty, the sweaty Shoto. If you're someone who likes to try hard, if you're someone who wants to win the million dollars and you're all business and you just care about winning and skill, then I suggest Luke. Luke, I would say would be harder to play out of the other two, which I'll explain in a second. But on the surface level, Luke's got a really good fireball. The travel distance of the projectile is really fast, but it doesn't go full screen. But it's really good against opponents that are good, I, I, like parrying. Like, this is tougher to perfect parry than the normal fireballs. He has an uppercut that goes really good horizontal range. And he's got, like, a running MMA move here. You can, like, run shoulder check. If you space it, you can make it safe. Um, he's got, like, an overhead kick to mix you up. You can combo after it if you hit someone in the corner. Beast mode, baby. And uh, so far, that seems normal. But what makes... Uh, Luke unique is that he has these flash knuckle moves Now these moves can be charged Now when you charge it when you just tap it it knocks the opponent up and when you charge it all the way It knocks him up further. However, if you're good, you can release it at a specific time just before it's fully charged and You'll hear him say perfect There we go. perfect 
And you'll see when, when he charges, you'll see it light up. Perfect, right? And if you're able to do these mid-combo and convert, you can get very high damaging combos with Luke without spending any meter. Here we go, guys. Boom. Really, really high damage, no meter use. But you can still use meter if you want. I don't want to be biased and uh, show combos with, with Luke, actually. <laughs> so that's why I say Luke is harder to use than the other Shotos, is because uh, his combos require some practice, but there is a reward for it. He also has forward moving buttons that are really strong. He knows how he moves forward and they can convert into some, uh, some good damage. The downside to Luke compared to like Ryu and Ken, even though Luke is somewhat well-rounded, his conversions, like he's not like Ken and Ryu where he can go like medium, medium. Like it doesn't work like that for Luke. He has to land big hits from with punishing or landing the crouching fierce. You gotta be good at, at punishing and understand the game. That's why I said he's more of a, a sweaty character. Uh, and uh, he also can double OD. So when you do OD uppercut, you can spend another bar to slam him back down. It'll cost three bars total. Or you can go like this. Good damage. Or you can double OD fireball like this. A lot of meter usage. You need to understand the drive system quite well. But Luke will be a rewarding character uh, to learn. Time for Jamie. So Jamie is a drunken boxer slash dancer. He break dances and he drinks. That's not alcohol. That is uh, a key drink. Can't drink alcohol in a game that's rated team for team. Anyways, if you like characters like Young or Yang from Street Fighter 3, Jamie actually borrows a lot of those characters' moves. Another unique thing about Jamie is that his moves are locked away by his drink levels. So if you press down, down, punch, Jamie will take a drink. And as you drink more, it goes up to level four, you will gain more and more different moves. So for example, at level one, Jamie gets a dive kick. And then he gets the one, two, three target combo that you remember from like Young, right? And the dive kick from Young and Yang. Uh, he also has Rekka's, like Yang does. At drink level two, then he gets more uh, target combos. He gets like an overhead. His target combos also go into drinks, so it makes it easy to get drinks uh, with Jamie when you land hits with him. So you don't have to just do raw drink. And uh, if you make it to level four all the way, Jamie gets super enhanced and starts doing crazy damage on his attacks. They get super buffed. He also has a command grab, like Young Yang as well. And you get some really good damage with them. Come on. It's, time to train. it's time to train. So, the risk to Jamie is the same thing as it's the same as his strengths, right? If you can't get your drinks out, then you're not gonna have all of your moves, right? And. For example, his breakdance is like an anti-fireball tool. You need to be level 2 to get that. His dive kick is level 1. And his uh, command grab is level 3. So it's, you know, it's a double-edged sword, right? If you can't get the drinks, it's going to be an uphill battle. But if you can get away with the four drinks, you can snowball and win with Jamie with huge damage. If you like that kind of playstyle, then Jamie's for you. Okay, moving on to Guile. So Guile is... The ultimate zoner. What, what is Gal's fighting style? It's Air Force. That's what it is. He's taught by Nash. Charlie Nash. Also in the Air Force. And I guess Air Force's fighting style is pure zoning. So Gal has one of, if not the best um, projectile in the game. Um, it comes out super fast. You could also make it go really slow, so you can use it to protect yourself and advance forward. Um, it's also a charge attack. So uh, for Gu a lot of Guile's moves, you have to charge, so you have to hold back and then press forward and punch for a lot of his specials. He has the Flash Kick, one of the best anti-airs in the game as well, also a charge. 
And there's also a cool thing for higher level Guile players where if you do a perfect Sonic Boom, and that is if you press forward punch at the exact same time, so you have a nice, clean, perfect input, you'll get reward with your Sonic Boom doing a little bit more damage and I think a little bit more frame advantage. And uh, it's the same with his, uh, his flash kick as well, slash somersault. But Guile's got some new tricks too. He also has his V skill from Street Fighter V. It's now a motion. You just do core circle back punch. And if you do a, a sonic boom from it, it will enhance it doing a lot more hits and making it more so that when you're up against somebody who else has a fireball, you could be the dominant zoner uh, with Guile. Guile should win like every fireball war. He's really good zoner. Um, he also has very long range normals. Since you're, you're charging a lot, they give you a lot of command normals that can reach really far and hit really far. Good overhead, Tarakom onto overhead. He has like a lot of good tools for just wearing you down, constantly wearing you down, zoning you, making the opponent want to jump on you and getting a lot of damage from that. As long as you're comfortable learning how to use a charge character, Guile is a really strong character. I wouldn't say he's necessarily easy to play because he's a charge character and you have to keep people out. Guile's weakness is basically how good you are at defending yourself and reading the opponent. If you're someone who's not good at predicting when they'll jump at you, the execution can be tough for Guile. But I think he's uh, I think he's strong. If you want to be someone who wants to keep someone out rather than going in, even though Guile can go in, uh, Guile can be a good character. For both. So we have Jury. Jury is evil and sadistic and she's a sadist. Her fighting style I think is Taekwondo. It's all kick attacks and if you like evil characters and you like feet you'll love Jury. One thing about Jury is that she's got this pinwheel attack. This is good for like um, combo fillers. If you do the medium version, it acts more like an uppercut for anti-airs. And that's the heavy version. She's got a dive kick. But her three core moves are these uh, Fuha moves. So if you do a light kick, you see she throws like this really measly fireball that doesn't go anywhere. The medium version is this like overhead looking kick, even though I don't think it's an overhead. And then she has this. But you can enhance these moves by doing these Fuha stocks. So by doing core circle back and kick, you'll get these stock charges. And when you do those, one of those three moves that I just explained, they will be enhanced. So now her fireball actually goes far and it's low to the ground. She can use that to go in. Cause Jerry's more of a, an aggressive character. She's got good long range buttons, kick buttons, but she has good, nice lights too. And a really good drive rush. So she's more focused about going in. The fireballs are not really for zoning, they're for protecting you to advance forward. If you enhance uh, this overhead kick, then you can combo after it. And then the last stock for um, the heavy kick is more of a finisher to tag in your combos. You can have more than one stock, you can have all three, which is pretty sick. You can then like combo into it and do all three finishers in one combo. They like cancel into each other. Another interesting thing about Jerry is that when you do the OD versions of these moves, you can pretty much do the same thing. So you can think of it like an alternate resource. So if you have the stocks, you can choose, do I want to use a stock, you know, and do this combo? Or do I want to use meter and do the same combo? You know, as a Jerry player, you're going to have to manage these stocks. Once again, you can uh, cancel into these enders into themselves and spend multiple resources like this also with with jury her level two the feng shui engine it allows her to cancel all of her buttons into each other like a magic series and you can even like launch for air combos so if you're someone who likes that kind of marvel style or anime style kind of characters that you're pressing like lots of buttons her level two super allows for that and you can combo into this and start a big giant chain and do big flashy combos. So 
Uh, Jerry could be really fun if you like to do like high hitting uh, combos with her. So the downside to Jerry, her weakness is basically um, just the stocks, right? If she's not getting these stocks out, keep in mind she can combo into them, which is quite nice. She has to manage these resources constantly uh, within the match. So if you're someone who's on the defensive with Jerry a lot, you might have problems with those resources. And you got to memorize a lot of different alternate routes on your combos. So that's Jerry. All right, Chun-Li now. Chun-Li's fighting style, is it Kung Fu? It's like Kung Fu, right? Chun-Li is another huge OG character. And uh, Chun-Li is not an easy character to play. I'll start off by saying that. Kenpo, thanks guys. Kenpo Kung Fu. Um, she's a very technical character. She has very specific buttons for very specific things. And on top of that, she has, she's a stance character. She can go into an alternate stance and all of her buttons change the different things. So you have to know what every button does. She has a launcher. Um, she has combos where you have to like know to go into stance <laughs> mid combo. It's there's a lot here. There's a lot here. She's also uh, a hybrid charge character. She has to charge to do her fireballs. She has to charge to do her spinning bird kick. Uh, except for in stance. She doesn't have to charge in stance. They gave her a good anti-air in this game. Down, down, kick. It's nice and fast. But at the same time, even though she's tough, I still think Chun-Li is quite well-rounded. She has good tools for every situation. Decent anti-fireball moves, right? Um, decent damage. She's got good supers that can carry you to the corner and she has the option to combo after. Her fireball, like her zoning is really good against characters that don't have fireballs because it goes nice and slow. So she can switch gears too. She, she, she can play close and far. The weakness of Chun-Li is that she's just tough to play. So if you're, if you like one of those characters where you got to spend a lot of time in the lab and there's just like a ton of things you need to learn and and study and all that, I feel like Chun-Li can be very rewarding. Kimberly, her fighting style is Bushin Ryu. And if you are a fan of Guy from uh, Final Fight, uh, you'll see a lot of her moves being very familiar uh, to Guy. And she is a pure rushdown, mix-up, set play character. She's not necessarily about fighting fair, she's just about going in and overwhelming you with, with speed and mix-ups. She's got a lot of target combos. A lot of variations that do uh, different things. Trying to remember each one. There we go. She has a run. She can literally run off the opponent. <laughs> and she has got a lot of options from her run. This is a grab. She can, the OD run is uh, quite fast too. She can uh, cancel her buttons into the run as well. And she can run stop. Like this. She also has a lot of variations from her run. She can um, run slide. This is plus on block. She's got a run overhead. Lots of stuff from her run. She has a teleport. This teleport can go through fireballs. It can be used to shimmy the opponent. Uh, the OD version comes from above. So whenever Kimberly needs to close the gap, she can between her run and her teleport. On top of that, uh, she has moves to throw off the opponent's defense as well, like her elbow drop. She can drop down on a dime and bait uppercuts, for example. When she does get in, the way she mixes you up is she has these spray paint can moves. So you see uh, below the health bar, she's got two stocks. If you press down, down, punch, you throw down a spray paint can and it'll detonate after a certain amount of time. And you can put down actually two at once. And the OD version will put two exactly at once. And then if you do the input again, you have to restock it. And I don't think they carry between rounds. So, what I mean with the set play is... I don't know a single mix-up with Kimberly. <laughs> Gonna have to make this up. Okay. So, one example is she can knock you down 
and she can throw down a spray paint can when the opponent gets knocked down. So she can go like this. And then she can lock you down while the spray paint can is underneath her feet. And then she can mix you up with like an overhead. And if the spray paint can hits you, uh, you can get uh, extra damage. So you can go something like, like this. I've seen a million Kimberly players do this on me, okay? So, yeah. There you go. And there's tons more mix-ups. I'm just scratching the surface. Um, she also has a hop kick move. And this move is really annoying. She can hop away from you, hop above you, or hop over you. She has a lot of tricky moves. The downside... Oh, there's one more thing. Her level 3... It gives her a permanent buff that gives her more movement speed and damage boost for the rest of the match. And it changes the music. And she dances when she moves around. She's having fun, but you're not. So the downside to Kimberly is a lot of her mix-ups and pressure might seem like gimmicks where the more people understand this character and more play her, some stuff you might not get away with. So it's really going to require you as a Kimberly player to be crafty, to know your options and mix-ups when your opponent figures out how your character works, and to just constantly evolve on your tech. And that will pretty much determine Kimberly's fate in this game. All right, Dalsum. So Dalsum's fighting style is yoga? <laughs> I guess. I mean, okay, look. Just look at this character's buttons. I'm not gonna say anything. Just look at his buttons. Look what this character is doing. Alright? I you tell me what kind of fighting style this is, alright? <laughs> so Dalsum is a super slippery, annoying character. If you wanna play a character that everyone hates and nobody wants to play against, and you want to fight your opponent from far away and just bully them, then Dalsum is for you. If you want to play a character that's like really original and not like the other characters, then that would definitely be uh, Dalsum. So Dalsum's got a lot of moves. He has a fireball. It moves very slowly to help you control space. You can hold down the button to charge the fireball. It'll do multiple hits. He has an arching fireball that can also be very annoying that your opponent has to pay attention to uh, while he's dealing with your far range buttons. On top of that, he has an air fireball. I don't know why he has an air fireball, but he does. If you want to still, yeah, take two. If you want to zone the opponent at different angles, he's very slippery. So what I mean by that is he has a teleport. He can teleport around the screen. He has a float. He can also float around the screen. So you're gonna you're gonna see situations where he'll throw a fireball and he'll teleport behind you. And with for a, a cross-up attack, right? And deal damage to you that way. Uh combo filler, yoga flame move, which actually has like good range in this game. Like look at this range, this is ridiculous. Yoga blast, I think it's called. This is like one of his anti-airs, back medium punch. Slides to go underneath fireballs. This goes underneath fireballs too. So Dalsum does really good against other zoners that want to keep him out. If you haven't noticed, Dalsum's very slow. <laughs> his movement speed is... Let me see his dry rush. Even the dry rush is pretty slow. He has a really unique uh, level 2 super. Where you can put a gigantic slow fireball on the screen. You can charge it so it does more damage. And the opponent has to deal with this while you teleport around. So Dalsum's weakness is that he's a character that's high APM. So actions per minute. He's a character that you constantly need to be teleporting around. Constantly pressing buttons. Keeping your opponent out. Because you're such a slow character. With such slow buttons. You have to be in constant motion. So your hands are going to be sweaty. He's a, he's a skilled character. He's a hard character to use and win with. 
uh, but very rewarding because like I said, a lot of people get annoyed playing Dalsum, especially a good Dalsum. And Dalsum it has a history of being a very strong character in uh, many of the games he's in. So there's a huge payoff, uh, but I wouldn't say he's well-rounded like Chun-Li, who is another hard character to play. Dalsum is more uh, zoning uh, than anything, keeping the opponent out. So against characters that are like, have really crazy high mobility moves like Honda and Blanca, you have to be very skillful at uh, getting away and being as slippery as you can. Uh, but also keep in mind that the execution of Dalsum is not as crazy in Street Fighter 6 because uh, his teleport is only forward and back three punches now when it used to be a, an uppercut motion. But I still think he's a hard character to play. Okay, Zangief. Zangief is basically the opposite of Dalsum. So Zangief's fighting style is he's a wrestler. He wants to get in close. He's big. He's huge. He does a lot of damage. And he's an easy character to play, but I wouldn't say a necessarily easy character to win with because uh, he has to get in. He's not exactly the fastest character. Uh, so the unique thing about Zangief is he's got a ton of grabs. I think he's got a normal throw from every single direction because he's a wrestler. Uh, the most threatening move is his SPD. This is a, a 360 input into punch. This move is unblockable and unteckable, which means that when Zayev gets in, it's gonna make your opponent squirm and feel uncomfortable and play crazy and jump all over the place because they don't want to be anywhere near you. So if you like that cat and mouse play style of getting close with Zangief, then this is definitely the character for you. You'll also notice that his grabs do a mountain of damage. Like three of these grabs can kill the opponent if you can land it. But for the heavy version, you have to be very close. He can, uh, he's got long range normals. Even his lights are really long range. He's got various target combos. Once again, to help make the opponent squirm, he can charge some of his attacks. <laughs> this move is crazy. Um, he has an air SPD as well. So even if your opponent jumps, they are not safe from grabs. No one is safe from Zangief's grabs. His level one super is an air grab. Just grabs and grabs and grabs. If you like grapplers, you're gonna love Zangief. He's got a counter for kick attacks, which also technically leads into a grab. Um, he's got a spinning lariat. This is like his anti-air. It could also go through fireballs and help him get forward. And it also helps him uh, with combos. He has a running grab. He can run at you and grab. This is once again unblockable, unteckable. The OD version from far away has armor, so it can like go, th it can armor and attack. You can't stop Zangief. Zangief is getting in one way or the other. And his level three is one of the scariest level threes in the game. Uh, it's a 720 motion into punch, and it's a super version of his command grab. If you see the screen freeze when this activates, if the opponent is standing next to you and they're not already jumping, they cannot escape this. So if I input the super and I set the dummy to jump, it's over. They will get hit by this. It's very scary. So obviously the downside to Zangief, he's very susceptible to getting zoned out. You know, if you're a Zangief player and you run into somebody like a Guile or a Dalsum, it's gonna be an uphill battle. Zangief also seems to fall off the longer the game goes because more players understand how to keep him out. But this Zangief is a wild card because now we have new mechanics that allow him to get in and allow him to defend himself against fireballs. So it's really up in the air. What we do know is that Zangief has high health and high damage and the most amount of grabs he's ever had. So once again, if you want to play the grappling character, then uh, Zangief's for you. Okay, Blanca. He's another one of these characters where... What is his fighting style? His fighting style is the jungle. 
more beast than man. And uh, his real name is Jimmy, by the way. So Jimmy, he doesn't fight like other characters. He's another original style character. He's meant to annoy you. He's meant to be really tricky. High, highly mobile. He never sits still. And he's another one of those characters that you're just there to annoy your opponent. And uh, always keep him on his toes and mix him up. And just play... If you like to play absolutely crazy, then Blanca is the perfect character for you. Uh, he's mostly a charge-based character. So you have to charge to do his Blanca Ball. This move is very strong. It's very hard to deal with for a lot of characters. It's hard for them to drive impact it or perfect parry. And you can bully uh, your opponent with this move. It also drains a lot of drive meter. So you can will them down. And you can change the speeds. And make it so it looks like you're going to hit them. And then all of a sudden you land in front of them and grab them. It, this character is going to make your opponents want to smash their controller. He also has an up ball. This is good for uh, combos and as an anti-air. So you can do a ball straight forward. You can do a ball straight up. You can even do a ball in an arc. This move is not a charge move. It's a half circle motion. It goes up and down and it can cross the opponent up in this game. It could also be used to escape the corner. If your opponent wastes so much time trying to run after you because you're so fast and mobile, you could just run right out of the corner with this move. The OD version allows you to maneuver it in the air. Making it uh, hard to anti-air because they don't know where it's going to go. Now, if that wasn't enough balls, there's more balls. There's air balls. He can do his ball in the air now. And you can kind of think of this like a dive kick. Balls for days. Uh, where if you space this right, uh, you can pressure your opponent with this. It's quite good if you get him near the shins. So, lots of balls. But there's more. There's electricity. The electricity in this game is not a piano input. So what I mean is, you don't mash punch. It's just a core circle uh, back punch. And you can use this for combos. The OD version you can use for pressure. And on top of that, Blanca's got one new tool in this game to annoy your opponent further. The Blanca Chan dolls. If you press down, down, and punch, you throw a doll on the floor. It doesn't do anything. It looks harmless. It's just chilling there. He needs a jump start. If you give him a jump start with electricity, this little guy will stalk you and run after you, while Blanca is fully free to move around. I cannot imagine the annoying stuff Blanca players are going to come up with with this move. If you use the OD version of electricity, they'll amp it up to the next level and this guy will start jumping at you. <laughs> this character is so annoying. I love Blanca. Blanca's crazy. Now, if your opponent likes to block a lot, and they will be blocking, on top of that, he's got a jumping command grab. This is unblockable. It's slow, but it's unblockable, and it goes far away. So... He's got an overhead too. This will go underneath fireballs. He's got a lot of ways to get around fireballs. Blanca is like one of the best characters to deal with zoners. If you hate zoners, if you hate those cheap characters that keep you out and you just want to annoy people, there's Blanca. Blanca is the, the recipe for that. So Blanca's weakness <laughs> is that he's pretty much full on gimmicky character. Like I said, his weakness is that he's crazy. He's a crazy character. I I can't imagine him being played solid in this game. Especially when we get to know how he, he plays with his mix-ups. With these Blanca Chan dolls. But if you're someone who can't trick your opponent uh, and play, you know, Unga enough, you're going to die with Blanca, basically. <laughs> if you don't have that Unga mindset, you need to be just as crazy as Blanca yourself. Or you might not have a good time. Oh yeah, one more big thing is his uh, level 2 super, right. His level 2 super takes the Unga and amps it up to Bunga. And what it does is it allows him to roll into more roll. So if there's not enough balls, this will take it to the next level. Balls for days. 
All right, now we're talking Honda. So Honda, his fighting style is he's a sumo wrestler. And Honda is a giant bully character. His main purpose <laughs> to make you cry and make you want to quit Street Fighter. If you like to be a giant bully and just make people hate the game, then play Honda. He's super easy to play and he's also easy to win with, I would say. He's a really strong character right now in the game. And right now he's my main character. <laughs> but that's because the chat voted for him. It wasn't because I chose him. I didn't manipulate you guys to make me play him. Anyways, the reason for this is his core move, the sumo headbutt. So Honda is a charge based character. You have to charge and you get this super fast torpedo headbutt attack. It does great damage and great chip damage where it drains your drive gauge, a bar of drive gauge. More importantly is that this is safe on block. That's right. Honda is minus four and he's at a safe distance and you can just whittle your opponent down. It has such high priority. It beats out almost everything your opponent is doing. You're pressing unless they have invincibility or armor and your opponent is going to squirm and try to get away with dealing with this move. One of the main ways to deal with it right now is the perfect parry it, uh, which is not easy considering how fast it is and I can alternate the speeds. Uh, the OD version has armor and it's really cool by the way. You notice that Honda spins around while he's doing this? Like Psycho Crusher? I think that's really sick. So you can armor through fireballs to deal with zoners. Now you might be thinking, oh man, you could just DI this thing. Uh, but no, it, you can't. As If you try to react to DI to this... There we go. You'll get DI'd back and then you'll take mad damage afterwards. Yeah, you have to guess DI, but most people are going to try to perfect parry it. When your opponent gets smart, he's going to try to jump away from your headbutt. He's going to jump back or he's going to jump up, right? To, to sail over and hit you on the way down. But... Honda has butt slam. This hits the opponent on the way up. So uh, you could just guess right with Honda <laughs> and just butt slam and annoy people. On top of that, uh, if you get a punish counter with the butt slam, Honda gets uh, combos after now too with the punish counter butt slam. Like this. So your opponent's going to be on the super defensive, you're going to be bullying them the whole time. You got nice long range buttons that have high priority. His heavy punch is really scary, crouching heavy punch, long mediums to deal with. You also have 100 hand slap. And 100 hand slap uh, is a motion in this game, it's a core circle back punch. And uh, it's a good combo tool in this game. Um, you can do it on block, but it's not as safe as it used to be. It's not primarily for that. We'll get back to the hands because you can enhance it. On top of all of this, when your opponent gets really defensive and starts to respect all your buttons, uh, that's when you surprise them that, hey, Honda also has a command grab. Uh, and it can do a lot of damage. It's one of the higher damaging command grabs. This is unteckable, unblockable. It's very good for closing rounds. Honda's got like a stomp. This is an overhead. He's got a target combo into the overhead. He can carry this into the grab, <laughs> which is very good. Honda, even though he's a big character that does big damage, he's actually pretty fast in some ways. His forward walk speed is really good. Not his back walk speed, but his forward walk speed. Because, you know, he's a sumo wrestler. He wants to go in. And his drive rush is pretty good, too. Really good speed uh, for getting in. So, Honda, he does want to be relatively close. But you can just bully people, mostly, uh, with the butt slam. Now, there's two other things about Honda. He's got a clap. This can be used for combos or for uh, neutralizing fireballs. He also has a, a buff move. So what this does is it amplifies his next 100 hand slap. So when he does it, uh, he can combo after it. And you can hit with hands like a million times. So you can do something like, like this. And then go into like his level 3 super. His level 2 super is good for going through fireballs. This goes right through fireballs. And his level 1 is a reversal. It's got full invincibility. And it can be used to get people off of you. His OD headbutt has frame 1 armor. 
So you can use it as a reversal too, but it can be thrown. It doesn't have throw invincibility. I guess I should mention the forward heavy kick too. This forward heavy kick is really strong too because it hits the opponent low. So the opponent's always trying to back away and defend themselves against you. And you can open them up this way too. And just like as a sumo wrestler, uh, Honda pushes forward and pushes you to the corner. It's, uh, it's a very cool... They did a really good job integrating his, uh, his fighting style with his play style. So the sumo dash, Honda's got a, a, a dash move. Now he can go into, he's got two uh, multiple fallouts with punch. He goes two slaps. This is minus three on block, it's safe. The OD version uh, is plus on block, it's plus two. And if you land a hit on it, you can press punch one more time for a follow-up. The, the down punch version launches the opponent up and you can combo after it into various things like his supers. Or if you have the amplify up, you can do, you know, even more stuff. So, Honda traditionally wasn't like a big combo character, but in Street Fighter 6, he definitely is. So, um, the weakness of Honda, he can get uh, zoned out, you know, against uh, characters like Dalsum. If you ever watched the anime, Fight Fair Dalsum, or against like Guile, you know, or against JP. Uh, if you can keep Honda out, he won't be as threatening. And uh, he lives and dies by the headbutt. If you're good at dealing with the headbutt, and guessing right when he does it, uh, you can hurt Honda that way as well. But I think Honda's quite strong in this game, and once again, he is easy to use on top of that. And uh, I think he's he's awesome in this game uh, for Street Fighter 6. So, I was talking too much about the, all those scrubby characters. You don't want to hear any more about those easy mode characters, then don't worry. The next character is for you. This is Kami. Kami's fighting style is Delta Red CQC. She is a hyper fast, in your face, close quarters combat character. She's all about precision, calculated precision, and sweat. She's a super sweaty character. If you're someone, once again, who's going for the million dollars, you're a super tryhard, you only care about footsies, true skill, footsies, hard work, then Kami is definitely for you. This character is tournament ready. <laughs> She's a great tryhard character. All of Kami's attacks are knocking the opponent down and continuing pressure. So she's got the spiral arrow. You can combo into this. Knocks the opponent down, they're in your face. And then you can mix them up with the, the hit, throw, shimmy. Um, she's got dive kicks. So she can approach the opponent at multiple angles. And unlike Jamie's dive kick, uh, this does not knock down. And you can convert from it. She also has an excellent uh, uppercut, excellent anti-air. Kemi's well-rounded in the way she can approach the opponent and defend uh, herself, but she's still a character that's aggressive and wants to be in. She doesn't have a fireball uh, to zone the opponent with. Now, the unique thing about her is that the heavy versions of her spiral arrow and uppercut and her hooligan, which we'll get into, uh, you can charge it and it'll amplify it. And if you remember Kami from um, Street Fighter V, it's kind of like her having, having access to her V-Trigger 1. And you'll get an extra reward and damage. The OD versions kind of act the same uh, without having the charge. So if you can land big hits, uh, on your opponent and punish them for their mistakes, uh, she can get a lot of extra damage with this new charge ability. Uh, her hooligan has been uh, super buffed in this game. Um, she's got a lot more follow-ups this time. So she can go into her dive kick like before. Uh, she can go into uh, her grab. Hence the CQC. She can go empty and it hits low. This time she's got an overhead now. So she hits an overhead. This is like her similar to her V-Trigger 2 in Street Fighter V. And the uh, OD version can hit multiple times and you can uh, combo after. Like this. I think I should go medium from that. And this could be charged too, just like her spiral arrow and her uh, cannon spike, her uppercut. And when you charge it, she goes super fast forward. And it's, she's amplified like her, the OD version, which is very cool. It's twice. 
and the dive kick. And then on top of that, she has a feint where she can go straight down like this and then go for a low mix up, for example. So you can really keep your opponent uh, on their toes on whether you're going for, you know, the overhead or the low. It's really fast. Yeah. Kami also has a spin knuckle move. It also got super sped up in this game. It's really fast. Uh, you can go through fireballs with it. And you can combo after it. Uh, can you combo after it with? I'm sure there's a better combo than that. The heavy version is plus three. Light's minus three, so it's safe on block. So it's another good tool to approach with. Her level two is also uh, an air super. So you can get around fireballs this way too. And if you can hit the opponent airborne with her level two. There we go. You're all over the place, like side switching like crazy. Also, uh, Kami's got some new target combos as well. And one of them uh, makes her airborne. Yeah, this one right here. It makes her airborne. So she can do her airborne attacks from it. Uh, which is neat. So she's got a lot of tools to open the opponent up. But at the end of the day, Kami, and traditionally has always been this way, is why I say she's a sweaty character, is that how strong she is depends at, on you, your skill level. The better you are as a player, the better you are that understand how Street Fighter works, and reading your opponent, the better you're gonna do with Kami. Because her weakness is that if you're not a good player and you're just like a scrubby Kami player, you're gonna get blown up. You're not gonna open up your opponent well. You're not gonna do enough damage. You're not. You're gonna have troubles getting in and sticking to your opponent. You, with Kami, you need to stay on your opponent at all times to open them up. She has more tools, but I still think her game plan is the same. So like I said, if you want a character where a character that grows with you as a player, as you get better, then Kami is an excellent, sweaty, try-hard character. So DJ, DJ is a DJ. And his fighting style is dancing and jiving. That's pretty much sums up DJ. So he has his air slasher, but now he can feint it. And he's got a double hitting air slasher. He's also a charge character, but he has some non-charge moves as well. He has his um, jackknife, really good anti-air, but the light version is also a feint. And so he can mix up your opponent and alter his jump trajectories. So it'll look like either he'll hit you on one side or he'll hit you in front of you uh, with his command arm with this uh, knee shot. You can hit front and behind. He's got his machine gun upper. It does a lot of damage in this game. Uh, you don't mash it anymore. It's just a core circle back punch move. And he's got his soba kicks, but his soba kicks this time are motions. It's just core circle forward kick. Uh, these are mostly used for combos. And the light version is also a feint. Uh, so you can do something like this, go into a feint and throw the opponent. So... DJ was regarded as a really weak character in Street Fighter 4, but he seems very good in this game. And I think DJ is one of the hardest characters uh, to use or learn in this game because he has so many tools this time. So, so many tools. Um, he's got good buttons. He's still a charge character, but now with all these feints, uh, he's very tricky in this game. They did a really good job distinguishing him from Guile, like another zoner like Guile. So he's got another move called Just Cool, and it's core circle back kick. And you can see he does like a little shimmy. But what you can do with this move is it has multiple follow-ups. An overhead, uh, a launcher, and a low. You can do the, the OD version, can knock the opponent up, and you can do a kick follow-up, and you can use this uh, for juggles. Something like really basic. But it does a lot of damage. On top of that, the feint can go uh, forward. So you can go back forward. So you can like get out of their throw, go in and throw them. Or you can go back forward back. 
Like this. So he has like, and this is a motion move by the way. So you have so many different options, so many different feints. DJ also has, it might be the best drive rush in the game. It does not go full screen, but it is turbo fast. Um, it's fast like uh, Jerry's, but a little bit faster. It's a huge burst of speed. His medium punch is plus two on block in a game where almost everything is minus on block for normals. He's got a lot of good stuff, but I still think he's a high skill gap character where if you're someone who uh, is going to put a lot of work in, right? You have the categories of characters that are hard to play that pay off, you know, like Chun-Li, for example. DJ could be the alternate version if you like charge characters, you like the zone, but you also like uh, to mix up your opponents and keep them guessing if you want to be really, uh, really tricky. I would say that's his like main weakness right now. It's just that he's tough to play. Uh, he just requires a lot of knowledge and a, and a lot of work needs to be put in. And um, we'll see how gimmicky these mix-ups are as the game's life goes on. Uh, his supers are really unique too. Yeah, his level one super is just a one-hit kick. It might not seem that big of a deal, but if you get a, a, a counter hit with this, is it counter hit and punish counter? You can crumple the opponent. And then you can follow up with uh, combos from this. But anyways, you can follow up with attacks after. Get an extra reward if you can bait your opponent to whiff something. Uh, his level 2 is also really unique. So his level 2... He goes into a big dance. And if you know like uh, Deadly Rave from SNK, like Geese is super. If you press certain buttons in a certain sequence... Uh, you could do a big like dance super and geese from Tekken geese from Tekken guys and There's three variations to this level two. The second variation not only requires you to know the inputs You have to be good at the timing You have to press the buttons when you see the notes pop up and it requires a lot of uh, practice to get it down and it has multiple different enders uh, that can do different things. So DJ is also a showboat character. How do you do that dance move? He got <laughs> he literally has a dance move that will build up his super meter. You hold it down, look at my super meter in the bottom left, and you'll see it charge up. So DJ is basically like Dan, but if Dan was like super good. It's down down two punches and you can hold it down. He's a character you can show off with to all your friends on how good you are at Street Fighter, but he's also a very strong character uh, on top of that. JP is really cool. If you like to be cheap, if all you care about is having the edge and being cheap, JP is for you. Um, he uses psycho power to fight. He is not a character that believes any other character is on his level. Everyone is beneath JP. He is superior to everyone else. He's the big bad boss. Even though he doesn't play like Bison, if you like that evil kind of boss character, uh, you'll like JP a lot. So JP's got a lot of long range attacks uh, that can convert. He has this staff move that pushes the opponent away and gives him space. He can summon a spike from the ground and he can change the location of it. and literally fight the opponent from full screen away. Now, a really big thing too, is that he can put up these rifts. And these rifts will detonate after a certain amount of time and a spike will come out. And the spike will always track your opponent. The spike will go in the direction your opponent is. And you can put these rifts in front of you defensively to cover you while you zone your opponent. Or you can do it offensively right above their head. Now, you can detonate this. You can move around freely while this is like covering space. The OD version places two. And you can like combo after this. Like this. And on top of that, um, you can teleport to the rifts. So this makes JP really tricky because all of a sudden he can change gears and come in and throw you, for example. It also makes him hard to catch. So he has a way out as long as you uh, place these rifts. If the opponent gets close, um, you can uh, teleport to them. 
Uh, you can also detonate the rifts right away by using Heavy Punch if you want as well. And JP has a ton of projectiles. So his projectiles are really unique in this game. His light fireball is like your normal average fireball. He summons like this shadow demon that will attack you. But if you do the heavy version, this projectile actually hits low. The opponent has to block low for this. And if you do the medium version, it hits overhead. The, the opponent has to block up for this. So now you have a fireball. You can do high-low mix-ups on your opponent full screen. And then on top of this, he has another fireball that's unblockable. It's a full screen, unteckable, unblockable fireball that does big damage. And your opponent has to worry about this at the same time while worrying about these rifts he's placing. And when you combine all these attacks together, you can see why JP is so cheap. Why is a cheap character? If you're really good at controlling the space with him, you can perfect your opponent without them even getting close to you uh, if you're good enough. He's got good anti-airs, good long-range buttons, good uh, get off moves. Now, another thing about this character is his amnesia. You press down, down, kick, he's got a counter attack, but it doesn't work like most counters uh, where you just counter someone who's doing a, uh, a physical attack on you. So when this counter succeeds, it will place this orb down and it will track and follow your opponent wherever he goes. And while this thing is following your opponent, uh, JP is free to move and act. The OD version does a two hit uh, projectile. And it sticks with you for those two hits. The OD version of this counter also works against throws, which is nuts. So that means the OD version covers both attacks and throws. It also works against command throws. It works against sweeps. Highs, lows, overheads, throws, command grabs. But what about level threes? There is no way this works against level threes. There's no chance. It does. No matter what the opponent does, it will counter them. It is one of the most ultimate reversals. But, with that being said, it still has a weakness. And that is if the opponent baits it and doesn't do anything, uh, then JP is susceptible to a punish counter. But, uh, it's cheap. It's cheap. Another really good thing about this is that it beats safe jump setups, right? where a lot of DPs would be weak to. And yeah, I guess that's a good point too, Mockery, is that um, it doesn't guarantee damage on some attacks, but nonetheless, JP has good defensive options. That's what the important part. But it doesn't stop there. Not only does he have cheap specials, he has cheap supers as well. His level two super summons a bunch of rifts and these uh, shadow demons hit the opponent low and overhead while JP is freely able to act and move around and teleport around while your opponent is defending himself. It's very, very strong. Um, his level 1 super is a projectile and his level 3 super is uh, a full screen super. That's very fast. If your opponent is doing anything on the ground, JP can catch you and once again, allow him to combo you on the complete other side of the screen. Very good. JP is very popular right now, uh, and he seems quite strong. So the downside to JP is you have to still keep your opponent out, just like Dalsum, you know, just like Guile. You're still a zoner at the end of the day. You have close range options, but you want to stay far. And, um, if you're not good at controlling space and controlling your opponent, uh, you know, you can get uh, smothered and overwhelmed playing as JP. And I don't think he's easy to play either. I think he would be a tough character uh, to play because of his, uh, his, the way he, his gameplay, right? Is keeping your opponent out rather than uh, going in. It's time for Lily. So Lily, her fighting style is, remember T-Hawk from Super Street Fighter 2? She basically plays just like T-Hawk. She is the new generation of T-Hawk. So Lily is uh, a grappler. 
She is a grappler with uh, a big command grab. Unblockable, unteckable. But she has a lot of airborne mobility attacks that can help her get in and mix up your opponent from different angles. Um, she also, uh, even though she's slow, her, her dash and back dash are really slow and her buttons are pretty minus. She has really long range because she has weapons. She has these two clubs and uh, she can hit the opponent uh, quite far and poke with them, which is good. And some of these pokes you can, you can convert and uh, convert into a combo from. She also has these wind clad stalks. If you press core circle back punch, she gets a, a wind stalk and this amplifies her three core moves. Uh, her uh, Condor Spire, which when the opponent blocks it, you're plus one. So that means uh, you can mix them up by doing a hit or command grab. Um, it does extra hits on her Condor Dive and on her Tomahawk Buster. And the cool thing is, is that uh, unlike someone like Ryu, for example, who has one stock for one move, she can get multiple stocks. She can get up to three. So now even if you burn one stock, she still has stocks left over, which is pretty cool. So she can snowball and then go all out with a lot of these attacks and be really dangerous whether the opponent blocks or not. She has an interesting level 2 super she can do in the air that can vortex the opponent in. I haven't tested this on projectiles actually. Level 2 is buff fire stocks too, right? Her, yeah, her level 2 super also gets more damage uh, and burns a stock for more damage that way. But I think, it, I think you can go in the air from this, can't you? Yeah. So you can combo it from the air. Which is, which is sick. Oh yeah, see it has more range with the stock. That's cool too. So it's another like uh, anti-fireball option you can use her with. Her level three super is a grab super. It's not a 720, it's a double core circle back motion and it's a command grab. And once again, it's unblockable, unteckable, but it's not instant like Zangief. The opponent can jump out of it. But you can combo into it, so don't worry about that. So when you predict your opponent's gonna jump, and you combo them, you can land this grab. You know, even though Lily has good range on her buttons, and she's got great tools to close the gap with, she still is risky to play because she needs these stocks. Like, you can't use her Condor Dive like, uh, like Honda's Headbutt, you know? Or Blanca's Roll. But it's still good, like if your opponent's throwing a fireball, she still has options to get in on your opponent, but there's just risk to them. And she can, they can amplify. Her uppercut is not like a true reversal. This is good as an anti-air and as a combo tool, but it's not used uh, when you're knocked down. Because you don't see the, the full invincibility. So uh, Lily does have some weaknesses, but as a grappler, uh, she has, she's a lot more mobile, a lot more mobile options than a character like Zangi, for example, to close the gap. So to use Lily properly, you have to be good at observing what your opponent does when you're in and they're blocking and adapting quickly uh, and using the right options between hit and grab and uh, being proficient at gaining wind stocks uh, throughout the match. I guess I should also mention that Lily is probably one of the most unpopular characters right now in the game. So if you want that hipster status of playing a character that no one else plays, you know, not someone super popular like Cammy or JP, then Lily can be good too. Another thing is that um, Lily is very basic, straightforward, and easy. She has a pretty small um, uh, move list, and she's also considered uh, easy and basic according to the character select screen. So uh, if you're someone who kind of want, wants to get introduced to grappler characters and not be too overwhelmed by the struggle of having to play cat and mouse and go in, um, then Lily can be a good uh, beginning option for you 
to get started on grappling characters. So consider that as well. All right, Marisa. I mean, her fighting style. I mean, just look at her, okay? So Marisa, she has that old school, what's that old school wrestling style called? Uh, Greek wrestling style, ancient. Marsh mixed martial arts wrestling style. Pankration, is that how you pronounce it? She has a lot of like relatable moves to like Urian and Gil as well for their normals too, because they have like a similar fighting style. Oh, Sparta, yeah, the Sparta kick. <laughs> so Marisa is a great beginner character. She's super easy to play and she does high damage. She wants to get close. She's a big brawler character. All of her uh, heavy attacks can be charged. And when you charge these attacks, she's plus. She can still pressure you. And she does a lot of drive. Uh, she drains the drive meter, a lot of drive chip damage. So all of her heavy attacks, even her sweep, can be charged. Her special moves can also be charged. She has this Gladius move. She can charge this attack. And this attack is crazy because it has armor. And it does, look how much damage I just did. I just did one special move. Her Glynis attack, <laughs> it not only has armor, it breaks armor. So your opponent really has to respect you. She's another bully character. She has a ton of attacks, normal attacks, uh, like double hitting target combos that are really easy to do, like medium, medium. Uh, heavy, heavy. Light, light. Uh, that can amp up a lot of damage. She has a good combo filler move, so she can go like this. And um, the OD version can lead to some really easy damage, really easy follow-ups. Something like that. Uh, she's got another insane move, this move right here. It's plus on block, even the light version. This The OD version also breaks armor. So she's got a lot of gap closers that help her get really close. And she kind of breaks the rules because these, uh, these attacks have armor and they break armor on top of that. Yeah, she's got the Sparta kick. <laughs> she also has uh, an armor uh, counter move called Scudum. And this move, while she does this, she has armor. And uh, let me show what it looks like when you hit with this. And she'll be plus in front of your opponent's face. And you can hold this thing down if you want. You can use this against fireballs too if you're close. And she has follows from this. She can go into an overhead. She can um, go into a low attack. And on top of that, she can go into a, a throw. A command grab. So she has all options to B plus, overwhelm your opponent, and slowly open them up and break their defense. And that's and she does very high damage with very short, super powerful combos that are easy to execute. And that's why I think she's one of the best beginner characters in the game. She's a great character to start this game off with. Honestly, you can just play her very ungut. Um, at the beginning of this game's life, there's a lot of moves you'll get away with because it's uh, the opponent has to know the matchup. Yeah, it's more work for your opponent to have to deal with them. The, the downside to Marisa is that as strong as these attacks are, they are very telegraphed and all have like wind-ups, wind-up speeds. And as this game goes on, as more players become more reactionary to these moves and are more ready for it, even though these moves break armor, they can be beaten by like supers, for example, or invincible reversals. So if your, if your opponent is sharp, you're not going to get away with just throwing these moves out like you will at the beginning of this game's life. And that will separate the poor Marisa players from the good ones uh, that will throw these out at key moments when your opponent has their mind, their, their mental stack on other things that they're worrying about with this character. With everything being said though, I still think Marisa is really strong. One of the highest ranked players is playing uh, Marisa right now, 
and you can get some really good results with her. And she's not overwhelming to play. Really chilled character. And she's really fun. Uh, you like to bully your opponent, but you don't like a charge character like Blanca or Honda. You just want to go in and use your fists. Uh, then Marisa is definitely uh, for you. All right, the grand finale. The last character to go over. Mano. So, Mano is a fashion model, a ballet dancer, and a judo gold medalist. <laughs> I don't know, she's a lot of things. She's very talented. She is mainly a grappler, but with a twist. Unlike Zangief and Lily, she is a momentum-based grappler. So what I mean is that when she lands grabs, you can see on the top left of the screen, she has metal levels. And she, when she lands a grab, it does a moderate amount of damage and she gains a level. This goes up to five stacks and eventually uh, it will max out at five. When it does max out at five, it will do massive, massive damage. Boom. Once it reaches level 5, it's the strongest command grab in the game, damage-wise. And she's got two core command grabs uh, to land. There's the one I just showed you guys, and she also has a hit grab uh, that she can uh, actually combo into. This can be comboed into. So she has reliable ways to get these uh, metal levels up, where she's comboing into them or just doing the raw, you know, command grab. These metal levels also break the rule in that they carry over between rounds. So starting from round one, if you can get five metal levels, if it goes to round two or three, you continue to have it and you're very threatening. If you get a really nice round one, uh, you can dominate and just be one of the strongest grapplers in the game. She has uh, some okay buttons. Her buttons, like I said, she's also a, a ballet dancer. She has some of her specials. You can go into a low range sweep. A far kick like this. An overhead kick. The OD is an overhead kick. She has uh, some pretty good anti-airs. Um, this can be used as an anti-air. It also juggles your opponent up so you can combo after. More importantly, she has really good target combos that vacuum your opponent in. So she can go like this and all of a sudden she vacuums the opponent in front of you, she's plus, and the opponent has to guess between whether you're going to uh, hit them or you're going to uh, grab them. And that's not all. This can be easily hit confirmed. I can press this button, see if it hits or not, and if it does, I press it again and easily confirm into it. So Manon getting the metal levels is not as hard as you suspect, but if you're someone who's good at whiff punishing, um, you're gonna have a good time getting medals uh, with her. Now, her hit grab is also a little unique, uh, where if you just do it, um, if you hold the button down, she just twirls, right? Like a ballerina. And uh, you can use this to go through fireballs. And go through the fireballs and uh, grab the opponent. You can also just straight up uh, combo her level three after this too, which is, Another hit grab super. Um, she can cancel into a kick for a long range poke as well. And she can even combo uh, that hit grab from an anti air as well. I think she could do it this way. Maybe light. Yeah. So she can juggle into this. So once again, a lot of freedom to combo uh, these grabs uh, together. Her level 2 super is a really good anti-air super. And it's really easy to juggle into. So, like, on the surface level, she may not seem like a grappler because she has these kind of uh, odd special moves that a grappler wouldn't have because of her ballet dancing. But... At the end of the day, she wants to get in, vacuum or vacuum you in, and make you dance with her, right? And get those five uh, metal stocks. So uh, Manon's weakness is if you don't get those metal levels, right? If you don't have the metal levels, then her command grabs aren't 
as damaging, aren't as threatening. So you have to be good at whiff punishing. You have to be good at uh, punishing your opponent's mistakes if they jump and find ways to land uh, this grab and using the, the Street Fighter 6 system. It's kind of like another momentum based character like uh, G from Street Fighter 5. Uh, she plays very much like that, where she wants to uh, snowball out of control. But right now, she seems strong. And getting the metal levels doesn't seem to be too hard right now. And like I said, if you can get a decent amount of metal levels by round one or two, uh, she's a character that has the almost always has the edge on you near the end of the match. The longer the match goes, the harder it's going to get to beat Manon, right? And I think that's it, guys. That's every single character in Street Fighter 6 so far. And I guess when the DLC characters come out, we can explain those too. But yeah, that's every character briefly explained. I'm sorry if I was biased on some of them. <laughs> and I'm sorry if I wasn't brief on some of them, but we did that without a script. And I'm sure the chat corrected me on a million of them. And I can't wait to read the comments when I edit this video. So guys, remember, this is the very first episode. This is the beginning of something that hopefully will be really huge. And hopefully someone will look at this video maybe years down the road and we'll have something to start off with to help choose their character. And we'll be doing bite-sized tutorials almost daily. And we'll be adding on the playlist and hopefully one day it'll be really, really huge and help everyone learn the game. And once again, we're not just doing the basics, we'll be doing advanced stuff in between as well. And Mira will be helping me out. Once again, guys, if you're looking for combos, Mira's working on the combo videos. There'll be a ton for every single character on the channel as well uh, within the playlist. And if you guys have any questions or you have any suggestions on things that you need to be explained that you don't understand, I'll be checking out the Twitch comments and the YouTube comments uh, to give me more ideas and I'll write it down and add it to the list and we can go over it in the future because we're going to be playing this game for like seven years, right? So we got lots of time and a lot of videos to do. So yeah. This will probably be the longest video we'll do is this this first one everything else will be much shorter but yeah that's it we're done it's a wrap i don't know how long that took but damn i'm glad it's over <laughs> jesus